Oh, hey there! Welcome back to ONSC Live. Did you get the answer to this week's riddle? Probably not, because the answer was benthic macroinvertebrate. Miss Maya, how could anyone have possibly guessed benthic macroinvertebrates? Well, those are really big words, but if you guess something that lives in the creek, like a crayfish, or a leech, or even a snail, then you're pretty close. Oh, sweet. So what is a benthic macroinvertebrate anyways? That's a pretty big term, but I bet if we take it apart, we'll be able to figure out what it means. So let's start with a word that you've heard before, invertebrate. What's an invertebrate? Well, it's a critter without a backbone. All right, so let's move forward to the next easiest word, macro. Macro is kind of like the opposite of micro. So if you're looking through a microscope, what are you looking at? Tiny things, right? So if macro is the opposite, macro means big, but it's not like elephant big. It's just big enough to see with your eyeballs. Now the last word is tricky, and that's benthic. What does benthic mean? Well, benthic refers to where the critter is living in the creek. When we say a critter is benthic, it means that it's living on the bottom. So what that means is it's living under the rocks and in these pebbles here at the bottom of our creek. Hang on, do you hear that? It's time for the game of benthic macroinvertebrate, or not. A water strider, benthic macroinvertebrate, or not? It's not. This tiny peeping frog, benthic macroinvertebrate, or not? It's not. Crayfish, benthic macroinvertebrate, or not? It is. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Benthic Macroinvertebrate or Not. Benthic macroinvertebrates are special because they come in three categories. There are sensitive critters, somewhat sensitive critters, and tolerant critters. Some sensitive critters include mayfly larvas, helgramites, and gilled snails. Somewhat sensitive critters include crayfish, cranefly larva, and dragonfly larva. And lastly, tolerant critters include leeches, midge fly larvae, and pouch snails. So, what are these creatures sensitive or tolerant to? Well, the sensitive critters are sensitive to pollution. They can only live in really clean water. Ah, so the tolerant ones, they can tolerate a lot of pollution. Exactly. So here we have a drawing of a nice clean creek. And here we see three benthic macroinvertebrates. We have a sensitive critter, the mayfly larva, a somewhat sensitive critter, the crayfish, and a tolerant critter, the leech. All these guys are just chilling, hanging out, talking about which flavor of ice cream they like best. If we sampled this creek and saw all three species, we know that our water is clean. The sensitive critter can only live in clean water. Now let's say someone puts a little bit of pollution in the creek. Who's going to be the first to go? That's right, our sensitive critter, the mayfly. The crayfish and the leech, they can deal with a little bit of pollution. But when we add more pollution, that crayfish is also not going to be okay. So if we sample this creek, we'd find only the leech, and then we'd know that the water quality is poor. Benthic macroinvertebrates are really important because they can tell us how clean or how dirty our water is. So what we do here at ONSC is we take samples of our water and we bring it up to our classroom. And there our students will look through our samples and they'll see what kind of critters are in the water. And they'll use that information to tell us how clean or how dirty our water is. Do you want to go check it out? Let's go. So what do you guys found? We uh, have crayfish, crayfish mayfly, um, the high fly. We find a stone fly. I mean, a stone fly. And they're pretty hard to find in the water because they're hiding behind the leaves and all that. Yeah. But we've got like about five of them. We found like two the fishy larva, two fish fly larva, one crawfish, and, and then we're, we just found another one. And, we're, and right now we're trying to see which, what kind of a bug it is. It's a like, it's no crayfish, it's oh stuck. gosh, oh gosh, no, 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 no. Uh, there's tolerant, sensitive, and somewhat sensitive. 
the sensitive um, doesn't like anything to be in the water, so like pollution stuff like uh, toxic waste and stuff like that, and somewhat sensitive can kind of deal with it, like meh. No. And then, um, no. and then they, uh, and then the tolerant can uh, live with, can just live with it and be all like, yeah, it's cool. Benthic macroinvertebrates are really important. And because of that, we have another fancy name for them. And that word is bioindicator. What's a bioindicator? Well, let's ask one of our student naturalists to see if they know. So a bi bio means living, and an indicator means clue. So it's basically a living clue. That's right. Benthic macroinvertebrates are kind of like a living clue. You can look at the ones living in the water, and you can determine how healthy or how polluted the environment is. For more information about bioindicators, check out Miss Alyssa's ONSC Live. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Oh, hmm. Vintage Natural Lizard Stingline. Bye!